So after not a whole lot going on with Civ 6 for a while, they now have some new DLC that comes in the form of a Frontier Pass, which is 40 bucks. With the new Frontier Pass, there's various packs that are going to be launched, starting with the Maya and Grand Columbia pack, which adds two new civilizations and leaders, one new game mode, new city states, resources, and natural wonders. This launched two days ago, and so far the reviews are mixed, and the reason for this, from what I've gathered, is not because the content itself is necessarily bad if it works. Like this guy's saying, don't buy this as of now because it might auto install and prevent the whole game from running completely no matter what you do. That's the top comment. And then we got a bunch of people talking about how they can't use it on Mac. And actually that's the next top comment with 500 people finding it helpful. Talking about how people can't use it on Mac. So the negative reviews for me at least aren't all that worrying and it might actually be pretty good. All right, so as they say, 10th tries a charm and I've been at this for quite a while, but I think I have the start here that might be the one. We got a couple T resources to our left that are in a really nice spot and I'll get more into why that is. Once we found our second city, we also have quite a lot of floodplains along this river and floodplains are great because we're playing in apocalypse mode and floods should be happening a lot more often. Every time a flood comes, it will buff these tiles by like one food or one production and they can start to get really, really fat. Also, we luckily started on the hill so we don't have to move turn one and you always want to found your city on a hill because you get extra production. On top of you get a three defense bonus. Our city has 13 garrison defense strength versus if it was not on the hill, it'd only be 10. To start off, we're going to make a slinger and we're going to start researching towards, well, there's actually a few different paths we can go. I think we're going to start with pottery for now and we're going to see where that whole thing goes. Okay, turn two. That is actually insane. I have not seen a turn two flood and it fertilized six tiles. This is it. We've been blessed with the god run. Unfortunately, it looks like the tiles closest to us did not get fertilized, but as you can see down here, two production, one food on this tile, so it gave it one production. This one got an extra food and then down here even there's more bonuses, which yeah, it does suck that it wasn't like these tiles being fertilized. However, we can expand down here and we can found another city down here along this river. And okay, after taking out the tribal village to our west, we got a scout for free, which is great because I was considering building a scout, but we don't need two. And so it's good that I didn't. And we're going to come down here and scout this out. And ooh, we got actually a city state to our west plus two. Okay, this is it. This is a science city state. And since we were the first to discover them, we sent an envoy to their capital for plus two science per turn, which doubles our science per turn. We're now getting 4.7. Our scout also found a city state to our southeast, and that's giving us plus two faith per turn because we sent an envoy to them as well, which I'm not as much a fan of this one. I would much rather have been like another science one or culture, but I guess the two faith per turn is going to be okay. We can found an early pantheon. And wow, no way. To northwest, we got probably the best tribal village I've ever seen. A free builder unit. <laughs> That's actually crazy. And it's another thing where I was thinking I was going to build a builder, but I decided I want to build a monument for that two extra culture per turn, which turned out to be the right play because now we have a free builder. And yeah, let's go to this tile and build a farm like they want us to, which by the way, since we built a farm on that wheat tile, we are now farming a resource. So that boosted irrigation. And okay, this is actually insane. So to our southwest a little bit, we found another city state. This one's another science one and we were the first ones to discover them as well. So we get plus two more science in our capital. So now we're getting 7.3 science per turn. We're researching text extremely quickly. Southwest of Fez and Hattusa, we found another city state in Nan Madal, and we were able to send an envoy to them as well for two more culture per turn, which is pretty big. We're now only getting 5.8, so that was a substantial increase. That culture has been helping us get civics faster. We're almost done with craftsmanship, and that's going to give us access to a goge, 50% more production towards ancient and classical era melee, anti-cavalry, and range units. Really good policy for doing some early game combat, which is what we're going to want to do potentially against our neighbors to the southeast. We got the Vatican over here. Vatican City down here is a faith city state, and we were able to send an envoy to them as well. We've been getting two faith per turn, and we now have above 25, so we can choose a pantheon. Goddess of the Festival seems pretty good as we have one, two, three, four, five potential plantation tiles, and so that's going to be giving us five culture. So it's about 20 turns later, and we sent a settler west to make our second city, Koba, and we're having Wakabnal and Koba now start making settlers. We're doing it fairly quickly because of our new economic policy colonization plus 50% production towards settlers. And the idea right now is we just want to start cranking a few of these out so we can get like, I don't know, maybe around five or six cities up. It's officially the end of the ancient era. We're now entering the classical and we're now in a golden age, which is kind of odd. I think all the AIs are as well, but they're deity. So they're probably always going to be in golden ages. For us though, it is kind of weird and I don't see this happening very often. We did clear out a bunch of barbarian encampments though. And for each of those, we got plus three era score. 
before. I think that might have helped. I like this one, pen, brush, and voice. Civic inspirations provide an additional 10% of the civic cost. Each city also receives plus one culture for each specialty district. And we're actually about to have a bunch more specialty districts. We already built an observatory in Wakub Nal. This one's actually built in a really nice spot. It's between two tea resources. And we do have a plantation on this one, which is giving it plus two science. And once we acquire this tea tile and build a plantation on that one as well, it's gonna do plus four science. Koba also wants to put an observatory right here and it's gonna get the same bonuses. We can now choose a government and this one's gonna be really good for helping us build up our infrastructure, classical republic. First of all, it gives us access to two economic policies. We're gonna go for colonization for more production towards settlers and urban planning for plus one production in all cities. For our green policy, for now we're gonna do charismatic leader, two influence points per turn towards city states. We're getting three, that's gonna boost that up to five. But now we're also gonna go for another economic policy, Ilkum, 30% more production towards builders and we're gonna start massing builders pretty soon here. Also to help us build up our infrastructure, Classical Republic makes it so all cities with a district get plus one housing and plus one amenity, which all of our cities are gonna have a district. These bonuses are really nice for building up cities, especially when they're really small and you don't really have a whole lot of housing or amenities. And having just one extra amenity makes it so citizens will grow 10% quicker and you get 5% more non-food yields, which is culture, science, production, everything. Fast forward up to turn 71, Wakimnal cranked out three settlers, Koba cranked out one, and we got four more cities now and we're pretty much done building settlers. We're just cranking out builders now. Builders are really important for the Mayans as their farms increase the amount of housing by one versus normal civs only get 0.5 housing from farms. Housing is super important especially for new cities as like El Mirador would be growing way quicker except they have no more housing and their pop growth slows by 75% so it would be like three turns to acquire another citizen so we can work more tiles turns into 12 which will be fixed next turn when this builder can build a farm on this floodplains tile which is actually really nice by the way. It's got four food one production and this flood's been going off non-stop. Next to it also actually this desert floodplains has been doing some work too. It's got two extra food from where we started and yeah this flood's been really nice. We have an interesting predicament going on with our neighbors Mapuche. So they founded a city down here Nag Mapu which is going to rebel in three turns because it's too far away from their main territory. Since we're in a golden age our citizens nearby are exerting a bunch of pressure on it and yeah they really want to rebel to us. However nearby the Vatican is under attack by Mapuche and the idea here is we might be able to swoop in and steal it. I declared war on the Vatican earlier and our scout and our warrior might be able to take it. 24 damage and 32. Ah, uh, it was not enough, unfortunately. So you may have also noticed with the government we chose, we get 15% extra great people. So we're getting 3.4 great scientist points per turn, which without the government, it'd be three. And that's because we have two observatories and one library up. Each one of those is giving us plus one great scientist point per turn. And that's about to dramatically go up as we're about to build two more observatories. Those are gonna be done in three turns max. Koba is about to make a library in four turns. We're then gonna build libraries in Zuntuk and Uxmal. So yeah, we're about to start getting way more great scientist points per turn. This guy though, Hypashi is really good. Libraries provide plus one science, instantly builds a library in this district. And actually, Mongolia for some reason is getting a bunch of great scientist points. I don't see Mongolia being all that science focused, but alas they are. And actually next turn, they're about to steal this great scientist from us. Yeah, we're gonna have to buy it unfortunately for 260 gold. It's half our gold, but we're getting a fair bit amount of gold per turn. So it's not a huge deal. So yeah, we picked up this great scientist and we're gonna bring him over to where Zuan Tunic is making their observatory. And in two turns, we're gonna be able to build a free library there. And all of our libraries and all of our future libraries are gonna be giving us plus one science. So Mapuche ended up taking the Vatican and Nagmapu still wants to rebel. It's gonna rebel in 10 turns now. And we're now in turn 90. We've done a few upgrades to our cities. We've added walls to all the cities that are on our borders. Except El Mirador, there's a bunch of icebergs up here and Mapuche actually cannot access it. The reason why I built up all these walls is Mapuche started denouncing us, I wanna say maybe like 15 turns ago. And I just felt like we're kind of in his way for his expansion path. So I wasn't sure if he was gonna attack us or not. I also have seen quite a few naval units from him. Like he has this galley up here, but he's got quite a few more. And so we're building a galley in Uxmal. It's only gonna take four turns because we have this policy maritime industries plus 100% production towards ancient and classical era naval units. We're also done building settlers and builders for now. And so we're going for this policy natural philosophy plus 100% campus district adjacency bonuses. This policy is giving us quite a huge bonus to science as this observatory is now giving us 10 science instead of five. And this one over here is giving us eight instead of four. We also got a few more over here at Zuan Tunic. This one's giving us six. And over here at Uxmal, we got another one that's giving us six. Overall, that policy is giving us 15 bonus science per turn, which is quite huge. If we look at the tech tree, we're actually tied now with Genghis Khan, which before we were way behind. We were like all the way back here. At the start of the game, the AI starts with three settlers and they get a 40% bonus to science. So they were just killing it with the science up till now. And we finally built all our 
observatories. We got our policy in place for that bonus science. And actually over at Fez, we sent them three envoys. So that's giving us plus two science in every library. And we have four libraries now, I want to say. So that's an extra eight science. Speaking of science, we did just research education now. And so we can start building universities for a huge science bonus of four per university. They do take quite a while to build though. 11 turns at Zuan Tunic and they have a ton of production, 23.1 per turn. And okay, it looks like the next turn actually, Mapuche declares a surprise war against us. When I saw the house of Artemis. And on that same exact turn, the Temple of Artemis was actually created. Temple of Artemis, I feel, is a really underrated wonder and it took only, I think, like 11 or 12 turns to build. It was really cheap. So the temple gives plus four food to Wakamnal and they're growing really quick now. Three turns for them to grow to nine pop and I want to say about seven or eight turns to grow to ten. The temple also gives plus three housing so we can house those extra people that we're going to be getting and the main reason why we built this though is that each camp pasture and plantation improvement within four tiles of the wonder provide plus one amenity and we got one two, three, four plantations within four tiles. And we also got this camp over here on this deer tile next to Wakab Nal. And these are all providing plus one amenities. Wakab Nal now is four extra amenities. And I went over amenities a bit earlier, but basically now they're growing at a 20% increased rate on top of the fact they now get 10% more non-food yields. Since Wakab Nal is only eight pop right now, they only need three amenities, but like over at Zuan Tunic, where they're at 10 pop now, they need four amenities. And if they don't have enough amenities, then they're gonna stop growing as quickly. By the way, I haven't really gone over Zuan Tunic's tiles and they have some really nice ones as they're along this floodplains. And like it's been flooding nonstop. There's five food, two production on this tile, six food, one production on this one, six food here, four food, three production on this one. And yeah, we do have farms on all those tiles, which are giving it an extra one food, one gold. But most of the food in the production on those tiles is all thanks to the floods. So Mapuche's got quite a few ships. He's got two galleys up here by Chichen Itza, which only has 13 strength, by the way. There's no one in the garrison to help fix that we're gonna buy a galley at Chichen Itza and yeah that's gonna buff its strength by 20. Galleys are actually really strong in cities and they buff their strength by quite a lot if you have a city on the coast and that's the case especially in the early game. We're gonna have Chichen Itza just start bombarding I don't know one of these galleys just this one I guess. The main thing is Uxmal over here is being bombarded by this quadrim and then they have a galley nearby. The quadrims only have one range but yeah we're gonna start attacking those things. We're gonna attack the quadrim for 32 damage and the main thing is we're gonna aim these because they do attack from range and they only have one range so only one can attack at a time unless they move this one over here and move the galley out of the way. But yeah, we're gonna wanna focus those down first. On Mapuche's turn, he attacked Chichen Itza yet again and didn't do too much damage to its walls. We're gonna send our galley out to attack their galley and we're gonna finish it off with a city strike. Meanwhile, over at Uxmal, it's still doing okay. Its walls are fine. We also do have a couple of Holches over here and we're gonna bring one into Uxmal and bombard this Quadrim. Unfortunately, archers lose 17 attack against ships. Makes sense, like archers versus ships. Doesn't seem like they'd be all that effective against them. However, our Holches get five more combat strength when fighting a wounded opponent. Anything that's below 100 HP, they get a extra five attack. And we also get five extra attack for being within six tiles of our main city, Wakabnal, which is a really helpful bonus and it makes the mines even better at just kind of turtling up and surviving invasions. But yeah, we're gonna bombard this Quadrim with our city and with their archer, we're gonna not finish it off. And then with this Holche, we'll finish it off. Meanwhile, over here at Zuan Tunic, Mapuche is sending in a catapult with two warriors. We're gonna bombard this catapult and our Holche is gonna attack it and do tons of damage to it actually. It survived with pretty much 1 HP. Catapults do a bunch of damage to cities and it's really important that we take that thing out. It's really low though and so it's going to do a lot less. Over at Uxmal we finished building our galley and yeah that's bringing our strength up to 40. We also have Victor established here. I don't know if I talked about that but he's giving it 5 combat strength. But yeah with Uxmal's now 40 strength I'm pretty sure we're fine over here. We're just going to finish off this galley with our city attack and then with our galley we're going to attack their Quadrim which is not that good in melee. With our Holche can we finish it off? No, almost though. We could finish it off with this Holche. Yeah, we might as well just do that. I wasn't sure if we wanted to finish off that Quadrim with our Holche or send it over to help Zuan Tunic as they now have an extra warrior over here. The thing is though, is we can kill their catapult this turn and we can pretty much, well, we actually can kill this warrior. I think we should do that, mainly because if we don't, it's gonna pillage our farm next turn and then it's gonna heal up to full. And okay, we didn't kill it. That's unfortunate. Well, we'll just finish it off with this Holche. And now they just have two warriors and an archer to take on Zuan Tunic. That's not gonna be enough. Well, they managed to bring another catapult over here. We're going to attack that thing and not kill it again. 
Yeah, we're gonna bring it down to one HP yet again. With this whole shape, we're gonna kind of play a little safe here and we're just gonna bombard their warrior. And with our warrior, I think we can fortify here. I don't think they'll be able to kill it. I don't really know what they did last turn. I think they just fortified this warrior, which we can kill it with this whole J. Almost, I guess. We'll finish it off with this one. But then with their catapult, instead of attacking our city, they promoted it. And yeah, we're just gonna kill it off now. It didn't even get one attack off. That was a waste of a unit. Over at Uxmal, they just have this quadrine. That's it. We'll attack with our galley. Or maybe we'll just actually finish it off with a range strike and then a whole attack. Okay, this is actually kind of funny. So Nagmapu actually rebelled and they have a swordsman out here that's attacking their archer from behind. We'll finish off this warrior and then finish off this archer. And then now do we attack their swordsman? We'll just leave it for now. And in nine turns when Nagmapu does rebel, it might join us. I'm not sure what's going to happen to it actually. So a few turns later, Nagmapu rebelled to us and there's a free city settler down here. I don't know why that's there. I'm wondering if Mapuche sent a settler over here and the free cities took it out and captured it for themselves. I wouldn't mind that settler though. And so I'm going to buy a warrior in Nagmapu and hopefully I can catch this settler with our warrior next turn and we'll have a free settler. And no, just what I was worried about. Mapuche came over and took the settler with a catapult. We're going to chase this guy down with this whole chain. We're going to bring him over here and then we're going to attack the catapult with our warrior. This next turn we can kill their catapult and their settler is all alone. I don't know if they're going to be smart with it. For some reason they're moving up with this catapult i don't exactly know what they're doing there we can bombard it with this whole jay and our warrior actually cannot attack it is that a hill yeah it's on a hill tile that's why let's bring our warrior up here and try to cut off the catapult's escape and the settler's escape and yep he's dumb or this is a bait his settler is exposed and we can steal it with our warrior he did put his catapult back in the vatican though so our warrior might not get out and yep it was a bait our warrior got double bombarded last turn and oh, it's so close to being able to level up i wish we could give it a promotion but yeah it's not going to survive. We'll have a settler move this way and if they send their catapult out to retake it then the catapult's going to be in a very vulnerable spot. And if they send their catapult out after the settler then the warrior will survive and then we'll actually start attacking the Vatican with this archer and we'll bring this guy up too and bombard it. And yep as I thought they <laughs> sent their catapult out to retake the settler. They're a bunch of dummies. We can kill the catapult and recapture the settler and then we'll attack the Vatican and we're going to run away with our warrior or we could just pillage this tile and heal up or maybe we'll just pillage this one or never mind or don't have enough movement points left all right this next turn we're just gonna bombard the crap out of the vatican and we're gonna heal up with our warrior by pillaging this farm from the height of these pyramids and here we go pyramids look down on us so at zuan tunic we built the pyramids and it only took 10 turns this is another really early game wonder that no one really cared about building and from now on any builder that we build gets an extra build meanwhile over the vatican it might fall this turn let's move this warrior out of the way and we can actually attack it with this more healthy warrior. And yeah, it's ours now. After taking the Vatican from Mapuche, he will make peace if we give him 20 horses. He'll give us six gold per turn for 30 turns. And we're not using horses anyway, so we don't really care about that. The reason why I wanted to make peace with him so bad is we're losing five amenities at Zuan Tunic because of war weariness, which seems odd as the only other city that has war weariness is Wakamnal and they're only losing one. I don't know why Zuan Tunic is so against war. I guess there are a bunch of hippies there, but with negative five amenities, they are not growing at all and they lose 30% of all yields like production science culture everything if we make peace that war weariness is going to slowly go down to zero it's not going to go down immediately but eventually after a few turns it will and swan tunic will start growing again so as you know we ended up making peace with mapuche he's back for vengeance with his ongoing competition target lady six guy during those 29 turns we get negative two combat strength when fighting him and he gets plus one movement in our territory if he succeeds in taking the vatican he will heal for five in my territory for the rest the game and he'll get 100 diplomatic favor however if he does fail our city strikes gain two combat strength when fighting him and we gain 200 diplomatic favor which is quite a lot some time has passed and we're now in turn 125 but it doesn't look like mapuche has gotten any stronger he's still sending in these quadrimes which are not that strong and we can kill it with an attack from our galley and a city strike since we built so many observatories libraries and universities in all our cities we're now getting 19.5 great scientist points per turn mongolia is only at seven 
but Puche's only got two. And wait, who's the last guy? I think Mongolia actually conquered the other Civ, maybe. Regardless, though, we can now recruit Isaac Newton, and he instantly builds a university and a library in a district, and universities now provide plus two science. So we built an observatory at Chichen Itza, and we activated Isaac Newton, and that gave us, I think it was like 30 science, because he built a library and a university there instantly, and then all of our other universities are getting plus two science as well. So you're now getting 212 science per turn. And okay, this is actually not looking good for us. Mapuche has a couple of caravels over here, which are about double the strength of our galleys, and they might actually just be able to take on Uxmal. I just started researching cartography, and we can start making caravels of our own in five turns and potentially upgrade like these galleys to them, assuming they don't cost too much money. We only have 263 right now. And the reason for that is we did just upgrade a couple of holches to crossbowmen, and we're gonna just destroy this catapult. Crossbowmen are a lot stronger than the holches in melee and ranged, and they give the Vatican a lot more garrison defense strength. It's at 34 now. All right, down here at the Vatican, they moved another catapult in range, and we're actually gonna move this crossbowman over here, and we're gonna attack the catapult from this side because we need to move this crossbowman away from this quadrium. We don't wanna take free damage, and yeah, let's kill the catapult. Over at Usmal, though, I am kind of worried. I don't know if it's gonna hold against these two caravels. They are really strong. We're gonna bombard that one. We can also use this military policy, Bastions, plus six city defense strength and five range strength. This is gonna give Uxmal a little bit more power and yeah, actually it's doing a good amount of damage to this caravel, 21 damage. Meanwhile, the Vatican Mapuche is sending in a pikeman and we're gonna to have to bombard that guy and we got him pretty low. We also have two envoys at Valletta and we're gonna send them another one to become their suzerain. And oh yeah, they have a couple of musketmen over here and two swordsmen. They now declared war against Mapuche and they're gonna send those in to mess with them a bit. Okay, we're on turn 145 and Mapuche only has eight turns left to take the Vatican. It's not looking like he's going to. He's not even trying. He's pretty much just giving up at this point. We ended up upgrading our galley to a caravel because yeah, he kept sending over caravels and it was getting kind of close to them taking out the walls. But with this caravel defending it and we have a knight station here too, its defense strength is now 60 and it's definitely gonna hold now. We got this new policy now, rationalism, and that boosts us up to 254 science from 213. So that was what, a 40 science boost? And basically we earn extra science from buildings and campuses, 50% more if the city pop is 10 or higher, and 50% more if the district has at least three adjacency bonus, which like I think all of our observatories have at least a three adjacency bonus. Okay, maybe not this one out here. Four of our cities also have above 10 pop, so their buildings are getting that extra 50% science. The great ball court is also very impressive. So we built another wonder, the Chichen Itza, and doing that it gives plus two culture and plus one production to all rainforest tiles for the city, which is awesome because these rainforest tiles nearby Mount Zukula, which have been getting erupted on, they're getting huge bonuses now. Three food, four production, and two culture for both of these. This one's the same, it just has one less production. We also got these two tiles way over here that Koba is also working, and they're not as good, but they're still giving me a decent amount of stuff and two culture each. Koba also did just get flooded twice actually, like literally back to back, which is why we don't have any farms here and it's pretty wounded. While the Colosseum stands, Rome Ooh, shall Okay, we got the Colosseum up. The Colosseum falls, Rome shall fall. When Rome falls, the world shall fall. So this wonder is actually really cool. And again, it's one that was really cheap. It only took us 10 turns to make. We built it over here at Wacom Nall and it provides two culture, loyalty per turn and amenities to each city center within six tiles. And all these cities around Wacom Nall are within six tiles because we built them with our civ bonus in mind where we get 10% bonus to all yields as long as our cities are within six tiles of our main city. And yeah, after building the Coliseum that boosts our culture by I think like 22, having an extra world wonder next to our theater square that we built near Wapkam Nall gives it two extra culture. We also have Governor Pingala at Wapkam Nall and he increases the amount of culture that we get at Wapkam Nall by 15%. And then you also got to factor in the cities around here are getting 10% increased everything. So I think with all that added up, that's how we were able to get so much culture just from that one wonder. It also gives two amenities to nearby cities and that's huge as like Zuantunic is up to 16 pop. They're almost at 17 and they really need those extra amenities. Although we did build them a entertainment complex there that gives 
him some extra amenities as well. All right, so it's turn 167 and our tech is getting insane. We are way ahead of Genghis Khan now. He's still in the industrial era, which like we're not that far in the modern era. We did replaceable parts and we're about to research chemistry, which by the way, that's gonna give us access to these research labs. And once we start building these things and we have power, that's gonna be a lot more science. Since our tech is so high, we have a few upgrades we can do now though. And so we're gonna do this policy professional army, 50% gold discount on all unit upgrades. And we're gonna turn this really low tier warrior into an infantry for 395 gold. And this thing has an insane amount of strength. Plus we have this caravel over here that we're gonna upgrade to an ironclad for only 145 gold. That thing again is really strong. And we have a galley up here that we are again gonna upgrade into an ironclad. Oh my gold, this is insane, what? Okay, we're in a golden age again. And this freaking reform though is nuts. Plus 10% production towards industrial era and later wonders, whatever. But campus district science adjacency bonus provides production as well? Holy crap, this is nuts. Okay, so basically what this means is this 10, yep, it's 10 science and 10 production. Eight science, eight production for Wakamnal. Zunon Tunic is getting six production, six science. Six production, six science over here at Uxmal. Wow, getting a golden age here was absolutely nuts. Over at Mapuche's town, let's actually see if he wants to make peace first. Let's just see how much, he's literally gonna give us nothing. Okay, Mapuche, well, we got a couple ironclads outside of Ina, Pier, Mapu, and we're gonna start attacking your city with those. Although, yeah, they're actually taking a good amount of damage. And let's get this Corsair in there. Actually, let's have the Corsair take on this crossbowman. And then we're gonna get our field cannon in there too. It was the upgraded version of the crossbowman. And yeah, we can bombard that thing for free. And while they actually almost killed our Corsair, we're gonna just promote this guy though. That's gonna heal him up a bit. And we're gonna have our ironclads attack the city again. We're gonna bombard it. And then we're gonna take it with our infantry. Let's see how Mapuche is gonna respond to that one. You wanna make peace yet, buddy? And there we go. He's gonna give us... 12 gold not even gold per turn just 12 gold and here we go we got a 1000 year flood but this time it's mitigated because we built a dam it did fertilize five tiles still usually i think it would fertilize 10 there and holy crap look at our yields 10 food on this tile seven food nine food eight seven six six some of our techs are making it so our farms get more yields now but a lot of that is from just constant dams just flowing through and then if we go over here to the west a little bit we got nine eight food eight seven food seven over here as well six food like these tiles are just nuts zuan tunic yeah they're growing so quick 65.8 surplus food they're growing like one pop every four turns that's so fast for how many people it has right now its amenities are also fine too it's still got plus one amenities partly thanks to wakamnal's coliseum and actually we can build a zoo here for an extra amenity and i guess that applies not from our city but from where we built the entertainment complex so that's going to apply to the vatican Vatican, Nagmapu, and all these other cities around it. And I think maybe Koba? Never mind, Koba's seven tiles away. So yeah, Koba's not gonna get it. But we'll build that after we build a factory and the coal power plant as well. We need to build that. And that's gonna provide power to, again, cities within six tiles. All right, a few turns later, Pio Mapu is about to go down. Let's see if Lataro has any better deal for us. Nope, he's not even gonna give us 10 gold per turn for 30 turns. Okay, Lataro, well, say bye-bye to Pio Mapu. And thanks for the builder as well. It's actually kind of funny. So Uli Sutuai, which belonged to Mongolia, defected to us because we're in a golden age. I don't know if they are. Yeah, they're not in a golden age. So we just picked up a free city that belonged to Mongolia. I'm pretty sure they're going to be upset about that. This one's not super amazing or anything. And I think they just founded it because it doesn't even have a monument built yet. Although never mind, I actually take that back. There's already a harbor built here. It's weird they decided to build a harbor before the monument as monuments give loyalty. So yeah, I feel like it's kind of important to have the monument first, especially when you're building so close to our territory. I think we're down to Mapuche's last two territories. Peak and Mapu is about to go down. And there it goes. Now, what will you give us for peace, man? Not even 10 gold per turn. Three gold per turn, that's it. Okay, well, I did try to help him out, but unfortunately he was not smart enough to accept the help. And yeah, I think that's it for him. Okay. 
It was too late, too late indeed. Puche did not stand the test of time. So now it's just me and Mongolia, and I have been scouting a bit of their territory, and it doesn't look too scary. Like, their cities just aren't that big. Pex is 10 people. 7 here, 8, 9 at Buddha, 9 at Eager. I did do a deal for open borders in his territory, as he has this four-tile wonder, Pantanal, and we sent out the great scientist Charles Darwin to do a mission. He gains 500 science for each natural wonder tile here or adjacent. Adjacent. Where he's standing, he's going to have access to all four of the tiles of the Natural Wonder, and that's going to give us 2k science, which completed rifling, refining, and we got more tech towards something else. I was about to say 2k science for us is not that much, but I mean, we're getting 387 per turn, so it's still a substantial amount. It's almost five turns of science. So we're in the year 1360 AD, and we're about to pick up our first tank. Now, I'm a bit rusty on my history, but I don't remember anyone having tanks in the year 1360 AD. According to Google, the first tank was built in 1915 so yeah we're about 565 years ahead of our time with this new invention it says genghis khan is in modern era with us as well except for we are almost in the atomic era also all the atomic techs for us are only going to take us five turns and so yeah i think we're way ahead of genghis khan in tech so we're now on turn 244 which is 1665 ad and we have produced the giant death robot we're also in the future era genghis khan is in the information era which is the one below us and we researched cybernetics which gives the giant death robot enhanced mobility plus three movement and can perform a jump action to cross over mountain terrain we're also about to research smart materials next turn gives the death robot reinforced armor plating plus 10 combat strength when defending against land and naval units next turn we're also about to reveal a tech which i have no idea what this is but yeah we're researching these super quick because we have 731 science per turn now and we're going to start by taking out this cursor with our giant death robot i think that was a Cursor army actually. So the tech that was unrevealed is advanced power cells, CO2 emissions from units reduced by 50%. But the main thing is it unlocks the giant death robot upgrade particle beam siege cannon. Range attacks against cities and encampments are 100% effective and gain plus 30 range strength, which is great because we're going to head down here to Nan Madal and we're going to attack this thing. Nan Madal is a culture focused city state that Genghis Khan actually just took. So we're going to try to get that back. Not a huge amount of damage to the city there. I mean, it was decent, but once we get advanced power cells research, that damage is going to go way up. I think the giant death robot just got attacked by a couple of Mongolian cursors and took, well, it's down to 94 HP. Needless to say, it took very little damage. We now unlocked advanced power cells, so our range attack is much stronger against cities. And okay, yeah, Namadol is at zero HP. <laughs> Okay, apparently the death robot can actually walk on top of water and like shoot from the water. We're going to move this thing towards Eager and we're just going to start bombarding it for minus 200 defenses and 67 HP with one hit. And yeah, here's a level of unit that we're dealing with. Mongolia has like these warrior monks that have 39 strength. I think the death robot's like 130. Holy crap. That's on our main city, I think. Whoa. Is our city... Our city's done. That's our main city just gone to an asteroid, what? Well, that does really suck, but thankfully the game's not gonna last too much longer. We just lost one of our GDRs to, I think it was a dust storm? I don't know what actually killed it. Well, no matter, we're just gonna take out Quericorum, and okay, that's victory, I guess. We got the domination victory. Apparently we didn't need to take all of his cities, just most of them. And yeah, here's our player science score. So before we went to war with Mongolia, we were about here. I'd say that's around 200 tech higher than him per turn, maybe 150. He was still getting a surprising amount, I guess. I mean, he did take over Hungary and was getting all the tech from the buildings that Hungary built. But then, yeah, at some point we were at like, I think 800 tech per turn almost. And then we had that comet hit our main city. So we just lost <laughs> so much tech. Here was Mongolia's faith. At one point he was getting like 300 per turn. Holy cow. But yeah, anyways, that's going to conclude the video. If you guys like Civ and you want to see another Civ video in the future, then drop a like. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.